When I'm looking at art, the art I'm most interested in is something that's been made by human hands. For me, sculpture is a way of escaping technology. I really like the fact that the, the way I work is, is pretty much the same as the way people have worked in sculpture for thousands of years. Um, I'm using pretty much the same methods and um, materials. The foundations of what I do were laid when I learnt life drawing at college. It was very much based on the Uglo Coldstream kind of school of, of, of analytical mark making, you know, never use a rubber, it's all, it's all about negative space. You're kind of analysing the shapes, you're analysing the form and you're trying to separate that from any knowledge you have already of what you're looking at. We had the Encyclopaedia Britannica, which was, um, you know, 20 volumes, and I was, I would just leaf through it, and uh, you know, in my spare time as a kid, and and copy out all the pictures, and they were usually sort of black and white, grainy photographs of of Greek statues and things like that. So I I really have a kind of um, fondness for that sort of thing, like antiquity, and um, I'm also really influenced by Renaissance art. I love when it starts to go from very naive to sort of more aware, to way before the, the camera was ever invented, but when people were starting to develop theories of perspective and all that kind of thing, sort of Piero della Francesca, that kind of thing. Um, I think that's kind of got a, a real magic to it, which also, you know, leads nicely into my, you know, my surrealist heroes. Um, you know, for example, I can remember this book on Escher and this book on Dali, and I basically was heavily influenced on the kind of surrealism from that. I also love Rembrandt. He's probably um, the painter which I get most excited about if I'm seeing a painting in the flesh. They, you know, it always blows me away. So you start off with a blob of clay and you're, you're pushing it around, you're adding bits, you're taking bits away. It doesn't look like anything much for quite a long time. And then there's this point where it just suddenly comes alive. And that's the point where, where you get a rush and you think, oh wow, it's, it's going to be good. And you know, you, from that point on, it's, it's, it's got its own momentum. So um, it feels like you're creating something that's alive in some kind of weird way. So much in art talked about the gaze of the, of, the, of the sitter. Is a subject looking out at the viewer or does the subject have their eyes um, averted? And so by taking that away, um, it's, it alters the way that you relate to the sculpture quite, quite dramatically. And you're free to just look, look as much as you want. You can just look, you can just look. Um, and I think that's interesting. I think that does affect the presence of the sculpture. And I think that if the eyes are closed, then there's the potential for it to open them and become more alive, so it's got that kind of ability to wake up. I would say scale is definitely um, a theme in my work. I think I'd like to explore scales a lot more. I'd like to do much bigger work and much smaller work. Whatever scale you make a sculpture at, it really affects how you relate to it, because obviously we're at full scale, <laughs> and if something's bigger than you, it's very imposing. If something's smaller than you, it's, it it's, it's almost feels voyeuristic looking at it. Um, and I think that when you scale something down but you don't scale it down proportionally, there's a lot of scope there for creating some really interesting um, work. I'd like to bring another aspect to it. Um, I'm not sure why that is yet. I, I quite often put the wrong heads on different bodies, <laughs> things like that. I want to um, kind of embrace uh, my kind of surrealist roots a little bit without going too mental and I also don't want to just do it for the sake of it. <laughs>